Hello all, and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to be inspired, empowered, and learn to live our happiest lives. Today we hear about mental health and the ways we can change our thinking, the best books to read during this pandemic, and a domestic abuse survivor helping to empower teens and women. Last week, I was at my beach house and I caught up with some amazing guests. We first meet Dr. Don Vaughn, neuroscientist at the Department of Psychology at UCLA, discussing mental health, neurohacking, and rewiring your brain. We then meet Sarah Connell, best-selling author and book coach. And lastly, Jessica Castro, inspirational speaker and women's empowerment advocate. Now let's meet our inspirational guest. Dr. Vaughn, welcome to Wake Up With Mercy. Thanks for having me on. We are going to talk about a very important subject and that is mental health. We could all use a little help right now. <laughs> oh. um, you did a TEDx talk, which was amazing by the way, all about neurohacking and rewiring the brain. And I would love for you to share with us a little bit more like what exactly that means? Yeah, so you know, our inside our head is 86 billion neurons, these brain cells, and how they are wired together and how they're connected with each other changes and affects our personality. So what we're learning in neuroscience is if there's something that you'd like to change about yourself or something that isn't working, um, then you know, rather than go down the standard path of taking drugs or antidepressants, there are other ways of looking at it. And there are ways where we can actually change or rewire your brain um, so that you can, you can live a life that you love. When you talk about rewiring the brain, really, what does that mean though? Yeah. When we talk about rewiring the brain, we mean literally letting you and helping you change the connections in your brain. So uh, you, all of your brain is interconnected. There's different parts that all talk to each other. And sometimes when we're feeling depressed or anxious, there's, it's literally connected in a way that doesn't work. It's, it's not wired exactly as you'd want it to be. And so we're talking about literally allowing you to change the wiring of your brain. So right now with mental health issues being at an all-time high, um, you know, children to adults are being prescribed antidepressants. And all of us are kind of being prescribed the same kind of antidepressants, maybe the same dosage or lower, higher. But is this really the best solution for us? And do antidepressants really work? Well, Marcy, I think you're spot on that right now is an, it's, it's an incredibly difficult time for people in the space of mental health. You know, we're seeing literally multiple hundreds of percent increase in how people are reporting um, their anxiety and, and, and levels of depression. It's really um, sort of unprecedented. Mental health, mental health has, has been on a trajectory of being more and more prevalent, and this has just been a, an accelerant. And so the question that you're, you, you perfectly ask is, well, what do we do about it? How do we deal with this um, epidemic? It's not like it's a lot harder than when you break your arm and you put a cast on when your brain isn't exactly working. What are we supposed to do? So um, I will say that antidepressants are effective um, for some fraction of the population. They're about a third effective in dealing with depression, but that's certainly not everybody. So there's a couple other options that people can try. One of them is a type of therapy. It's known as CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy, and it is effective and it is uh, mental health providers um, can give you that. Um, and that helps with maybe another third. But there's also some new technology that I've, I've been excited about and is in my TEDx talk, which is about it's, it's, you know, literally using the power of technology to stimulate or change uh, and change how your brain is firing. So you might imagine that, let's say part of your brain when you're depressed, is just not firing as much as normal. It's just not as active. You can actually use um, something called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, to stimulate that part of your brain and kind of bring it back uh, towards what is typical of people who aren't feeling depressed. And that ends up making people... Um, come out of depression that, that didn't see any help from antidepressants and didn't see any help from, from therapy. Right. Now, where can you find something like that? Or, I mean, are all doctors, you know, educated in this area? 
Yeah, it's, um, so it was only approved in 2008 by the FDA. So it's been over 10 years, but it's still not, um, it's not on the top of everyone's heads. You might have to actually go talk to your doctor, but it is a full medical treatment. You can go to a, a psychiatrist, we'll deliver this, and uh, there are machines for it. It's not like they're going to hook you up from some horror movie and put clips on your head or something. It's not like that at all. It's a real, just a, it's an incredible tool. I just feel like it gives, you know, doctors are now letting, uh, more and more doctors are finding out about this and it gives people access who who tried multiple antidepressants and, and cannot get out of this depressed state. And I actually have someone close to me in my life who's in this state and I'm just, uh, I saw this, I saw them go through this and it was, I was so thankful that they had another option other than drugs, which they're kind of a brute force thing, right? You take a drug and it goes all over your body, but the problem's up here. Shouldn't we want, shouldn't we have something that's targeted? Yeah, absolutely. And I see and hear a lot of stories about, especially young teens that are dealing with mental health issues and they're throwing all these different kinds of drugs at them and they're not working, right? And they're trying to find whatever the best mixes of these drugs to help them. And, you know, that takes me back to the antidepressants as far as our genetic makeup. We're all different and yet they're throwing the same drugs at us. What, what can we do about that? Or what question can we ask our doctor? So we're not just put under, you know, a, a blanket prescription. Yeah, so the almost certainly in 20 years or 30 years after the research is done, we'll find out that, oh, well, if you have, if you have these genes, this different brain receptor, a slight change in it, then this drug works the best. And if you have these genes, then this one drug, uh, works the best. But the problem is those studies haven't really been done at scale. So we just don't know the answer. So the, you know, I, I also feel in doctors are in a tough spot if they don't know, no one knows there's no evidence on it. So they're like, try this, did it work? Try this, did it work? Try this, and so we unfortunately for mental health, we're in the shotgun method of just giving you a bunch of options, and that's um, as a patient that can feel really like, oh my God, how come they don't know the answer? Um, and that's really scary. And so on both sides, it's just a tough spot. So I wish there was these uh, curated direct treatments. I think those are going to come out in the next decade or two, where they're where we're now realizing like, well, if your brain is a little bit different, uh, then you should have a slightly different kind of drug, and so forth. So right now, um, unfortunately, there isn't another option other than the shotgun method. But I'm glad that there are at least multiple drugs out now that people can try. Um, and and, and right. if not that, we're doing the technology route and doing the brain stimulation as a, as a brand new way to give you power over what you can do for mental health. Well, it's incredible work that you are doing and I can talk to you all day. So <laughs> if there is, you know, someone out there that is seeking more information, how can they find you uh, and, you know, find out how to ask the right questions? Yeah, I would just say first thing is, I just hope everyone knows they're not alone. A lot of people are suffering right now and a lot of people are suffering even after the pandemic. I'm sure it'll like it's a real issue. There's nothing wrong or broken about you. There's just something that, you know, can there's treatment that can bring you to a, to a different state in your life. And so um, you can find me at, on social media at Dr. Don Vaughn. Um, but if you're looking, you know, if you're looking out there for options, talk with your doctor. These are not this isn't crazy stuff off the wall, like say, hey, what about, what about TMS or what about brain stimulation for my depression? Can you refer me to a psychiatrist? Um, go for it. Mm. It's, it's, it's something that can have the power to heal you and doesn't have a long-term consequence. Amazing, Dr. Vaughn. And anyone out there, please go watch Dr. Vaughn's TEDx talk, Neurohacking, Rewiring Your Brain, and you'll learn all about this. So thank you again, Dr. Vaughn, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Marcy. Next up, we meet Sarah Connell and hear about some great books to read during this pandemic. Next week, we meet Jennifer Davis from The Real Housewives of Dallas. She shares about her sobriety and what it is like to be on a reality show. We then meet Brielle Cotterman. She survived attempted murder and domestic violence. She is now educating others on teen dating violence awareness and what we need to know. Lastly, we're going to meet Deidre Breckenridge Scribala. After losing her stepdaughter, she and her husband, Mark, set out on a mission with a purpose to remind parents to tune into their children. Hello, Sarah.
Sarah, welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Thanks so much for having me. You are a best-selling author and a book coach. Can you tell me really quick what a book coach is? Sure. So once I fulfilled my dream of becoming an author, which was something I'd wanted to do since I was quite young, I realized that I really wanted that to be my mission. I wanted to help other women, men, underrepresented voices who knew that they had a story to share to really reach people and make an impact with their story. So I took everything I'd learned from being a life coach for 10 years and then becoming an author myself and sort of merged my worlds. And so I have the great privilege now of helping hundreds of women around the globe bring their stories to life and make a huge impact. I love that. So we are going to talk about how books can help us. And one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, can books really help us through a crisis, no matter what we're going through? Right, because we can think, okay, you can read a book, but how big a difference can it make? And what happened about 15 years ago to me is I was in a job that unfortunately was pretty abusive, very me too. And it was um, really devastating. And I was spiraling into a health crisis, that, that job crisis. And I randomly picked up a book in the Boston airport one day and read it. And reading that book changed everything. I was able from reading that one story, it was just one woman, she wasn't a household name, just a woman sharing her story, helped me leave that job, get help for the health crisis that I was in and change everything about my life. So I actually go so far as to say a book can even save a life because I credit that book as saving mine. Yeah, I believe that too. So during this pandemic, are, are we turning to reading more? <laughs> and, uh, you know, we have the time to read, which is so amazing. And, you know, we talk about the pandemic, but all the other things in life are happening, too. And it, maybe it's kind of pushing along things right now, whether it's divorce or whatever it may be. So what are you seeing right now when it comes to reading? Well, this was fascinating to me because I know I turn to books. I'm a book book person, right? So that was that was clear. But I was curious, are other people reading? So we know we're watching Bridgerton, we're binging Netflix, we're doing all kinds of other things, caring for relatives, taking care of our kids in homeschool. There's a lot. Yes. The neat thing is that book sales went up over 15% last year. I think it was, I'll double to 750.9 million books sold. Wow. So uh, especially eBooks, because you know, no risk of uh, germs, <laughs> contamination. So yeah. um, book reading did increase. And what was different is sort of what people were reading seemed to change and also our attention span. I think quarantine, fatigue is a real thing. So people have reported feeling a little bit less able to focus for long periods of time, but they are finding great solace and comfort in books. Right. So you posed a question to 20,000 people, right? I did. As far as because, like, yeah. Right. Like we have access to social media now. So I said, you know what, I want to know what, what's going on with, again, are people reading and what are they reading? And what came yeah. back is that answer of, you know, it's hard to focus, but yes, I'm reading. And here's what was fascinating. People who were generally fiction readers, they love novels. A lot of them started turning to nonfiction books. So they mm -hmm. were looking to self-help personal growth, books on anti-racism, books on patriarchy, looking for answers to help us with these huge problems we're facing. And then on the flip side, there were readers who had typically read a lot of nonfiction biographies, memoirs that said, I just need an escape. So we saw a lot of people yeah. reading classics, turning to romance novels, mysteries, thrillers, because there was something soothing in just knowing that by the end of this Louise Penny mystery, you know, Inspector Ganache was going to solve the crime and, and life could go on yeah. and I'm going to go eat lemon meringue pie. So it was interesting that reading tastes changed due to what yeah. people were experiencing. I feel that myself. That's happened for me. So yeah, that's really interesting. So what types of books can we read right now to maybe help us through this pandemic? For sure. So the number one front runner, I was curious, is one book of these 20,000 people we ask going to rise to the surface. So Glennon Doyle's Untamed, I know many of your viewers might have read it. That was the number one book for women. And mm -hmm. I think it's because even though it was popular before the pandemic, something in Doyle's message of 
loving fiercely, full, like focusing on what actually matters. If nothing else mm. this year has shown us, like we don't know how much time we have, we have no idea what's gonna happen. So that book really has provided a lot of inspiration for readers. Mm. And then um, the, the book, um, Ibram X. Kennedy's book, How to Be an Anti-Racist was also a front runner response from all uh, ethnicities of readers. People from all backgrounds are looking to his book and other books to really give them a, a roadmap how do we start yeah. to dismantle some of these problems and 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 uh, desystemize any way that we're participating? So those two books were kind of large front runners, and then after that came Brene Brown's books. Of course, we you know got some of them here. You know, daring greatly. <laughs> but this is interesting. So the Gina Wickman books, uh, Get a Grip, is the first one. There have been thousands of new entrepreneurs created during this pandemic. Yes. So people are looking to books on how to be a successful entrepreneur. How do I set yeah. up a business from home? Pivot books yeah. are really big. Yeah, and it's amazing. You can actually get a book on anything. Yeah. So if there is a reinvention or something happening in your life, you can go out there and find information on it. So yeah. let's talk about reading books and quarantine brain and pandemic fatigue, which you did touch on that. Yes. But how is that really like helping us and, and how can it help us to get through this? Well, here's what's interesting. So it's, of course, very comforting to go watch shows and, you know, numb out a little bit or get some comfort through through television and other visual media. However, because reading requires different parts of our brain to fire and it requires our imagination to create the visuals and create the scene, we're actually doing something for our health when we read. We're invigorating parts of the brain that have become potentially lethargic. We're waking it back up and it actually helps with creative problem solving. So I'm a really big fan, even if people like my son is 10 and he's like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna read today. I'm like, we're gonna read no matter what because yes, it's pleasurable. However, it's also really helping us get creative in terms of how we're gonna have solutions coming through the rest of this pandemic. And creativity is incredible. It really helps to motivate you and bring up the mood. So. I wanna thank you, Sarah, for coming on and helping us get through this and understanding how books can help us and even you as an author helping other authors. That's incredible. So thank you again, Sarah, for coming on the show. Thanks, Marcy. Next up, we meet women's empowerment advocate, Jessica Castro. Hi, Jessica. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Thank you so much for having me on, Marcy. I really appreciate this. And I'm always so excited to be in front of the camera and speak with, you know, obviously someone that I, I, I know for quite a few years now, and it's been great keeping in touch. Um, so I'm really excited for this. Thank you. I am too. I'm, and I'm excited about what you're doing. So we have to go back a little bit with your story though and where sure. all of this started and why mm -hmm. you're helping everyone now. So you were on a reality show called Married at First Sight. And mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about that experience for you? Sure, so um, like you said, I think it was about six, seven years ago, um, this opportunity kind of really fell in my lap and um, I figured why not? I was single at the time. I was at a really great place in my life. And so for anyone who doesn't know what Married at First Sight is, it's pretty much an arranged marriage. <laughs> so I met my now ex-husband, spoiler alert, sorry, um, <laughs> at the <laughs> altar for the very first time. Um, the experiment was filmed for six weeks and there were a lot of ups, a lot of downs, more downs than ups. Um, and through it all, you know, I ended up getting a divorce. Uh, through that process, though, I really lost myself as a woman, as Jessica, as a Latina. I was being um, verbally abused, and I did not realize that was happening until I watched it with the world. Um, and that mm. was kind of like a slap in the face for me. And it was just like a shake, like, oh, my God, I lost myself. Yeah. And how do I get myself back to that happy-go-lucky you know, love life, Jessica. Yeah. And it, it, it took 
you know, it wasn't an easy process. Nothing, I feel like nothing really ever is. And so I, I took a lot of positive opportunities with meeting women who had been in similar situations. First of all, I was getting a ton of messages from women all over the world while the show was airing because a lot of them had either been in that situation or were currently in that situation. In that situation. So a lot of mm -hmm. them wanted kind of like a, a help me. And then others yeah. were just like, thank you for sharing your story because I've been there and I feel like it's not something that is really talked about. But it was also something it's I couldn't incredible. hide. Yeah, so it's incredible. Like you were given this opportunity. I'm sure you were really excited about it, being in front mm -hmm. of the camera. And then this took place. So yep. this is the basis of my show is the hardships, but the triumph. So right. you went through this really hard time and you lost yourself, but you saw that. So finding that strength to even see that and bring yourself out of it is amazing. And now with this platform, you are now helping other women. So mm -hmm. one of the things that you have decided to do is now empower others and educate them. So tell us a little bit more about that. Sure. You know, it, I've always loved to help people and to give back however I could. Growing up from not much, I didn't have much to give back. So when the show aired, um, I really decided I wanted to mentor um, really young girls because I feel like when I was a teenager, yes, I had the support of my, my mom because we're really close and the support of my family, but I really felt like I wanted someone outside of my family that I can speak to where I felt like I was not going to be judged. And I feel like a lot of girls, a lot of young girls, teenagers, and, and I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like they don't have that. I didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be that someone for a young girl. Um, but again, with that, with the opportunity yeah. from the show, I was getting so many messages and I was just being an open book and I was just being 100% honest about what I went through, how I was feeling, how I recovered from that, the steps that I had taken. And I figured if I can help one other person, you know, female or, or male, why not? do that? Why not give that information? Why not use my platform for this exact reason? Um, you know, I was very lucky where I met an organization of young incarcerated teenagers where I was able to actually mentor a young girl. And then from there, I did more research and wanted to, wanted to help another young girl. And I came across another um, platform where I still mentor this girl. She started, she, when I met her, she was a junior. We went into senior year and now she's a freshman in college. So mm -hmm. just being able to go through those life steps with her and helping her yeah. any way that I can is, I feel and really important. Laying that foundation for a teen is incredible to have that mentorship. And, you know, parents are there, but a lot of times, we do need someone outside uh, that we can look up to. Um, right. You know, young girls, right? right? That they, they, they're, they're going to listen to someone else sometimes before they listen to their moms. Um, exactly. <laughs> so that, that, you know, incredible. But you, you also have these conferences for women. So, and I know with uh, COVID, you had a conference that you guys were going to do, but you know, you had to put that on the back burner and are now looking to do it again once we get out of this. So can you tell us a little bit about these women empowering conferences that you're going to have sure. and also who you're going to help? Sure. So as you said, you know, from my platform, I have been able to be a part of really amazing panels for self-empowerment and just really sharing my story. Um, you know, good and bad. I, 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 I love sharing my story. And I know some people are just like, get over it already. And I'm like, I'm over it. But I think it's really important to just continue to spread awareness of, you know, what we go through in relationships and just in life. Um, but so a few years ago, I did have the opportunity to host my first um, empowerment panel. And we had a great turnout. We had some really amazing women on the panel. Um, 
and we spoke about my experience on the show. We had, uh, we had two mommies on the show. We really spoke about just women either in the industry or just like, you know, overall in life. Um, mm -hmm. And now being a new mommy, uh, that's a different platform for me. And still, ex you know, going through all of that, we have decided Congratulations, that- Congratulations, by the way. Thank so you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the makeup is definitely helping with not feeling so tired today. So thank God for makeup. But, <laughs> um, we, <laughs> you know, so we are taking on a new platform and I think it's super important to give back. You know, it's something that I have been doing and now we want to give back to a, to a mommy, you know, whether it, whether she's, you know, a first time mommy, um, a single mommy, whatever the case may be, we really want to give back. Um, and, and now that I know what it's like, we would love to do like a mommy makeover, you know, new clothes, good hair, like I think that's, new hair, like just yeah, the just, whole yeah. shebang. I know that's amazing. It's amazing to help a woman get to the next step in life, right? That needs that help. And maybe they've gone through a divorce or whatever it may be right. moving forward. So can you just tell us real quickly, because unfortunately we're out of time just where Already? Uh, we can wow. find more information. I know it goes so fast. So just <laughs> where we can find the information and you, Jessica. Sure, so right now we don't have much information just because we are, you know, working around the logistics of COVID. We want it to be an in-person event. <laughs> However, we never know the status of, you know, life right now. So that is something that we are definitely working on, but you can always find me on my social media handles especially Instagram. I'm very, very um, active on there. Even with the baby, people are like, how are you so active? I'm like, trust me, I make it work. <laughs> yeah, um, my exactly. Instagram. Yeah. So that's really where I'm most active. My handle okay. is MSJ Castro, my last name. So it's Miss J Castro. And we are always keeping the information updated on there and then once Wonderful. we are finalized with the you know with that event it'll, it'll all be, be there right on posting. there absolutely thank oh yeah thank you so much oh, thank, thank you, you for coming on the show jessica and all the great work that you're doing thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you marcy bye 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 <laughs> thank you all so much for spending your saturday morning with me I just want you to know how important self-care is. And I don't want you ever to feel bad about that. We must fill our own cup before we can help anyone else. Just wanna remind you that if you wanna check out any past shows or keep up with the show, check out wakeupwithmarcy.com and I hope you will join my mailing list. And also wanted to remind you about Menopause Monday, every Monday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time on Instagram Live talking about perimenopause, menopause, what's going on with our bodies, what help is available, and also please be kind to yourself and to others. All right, guys, have a great Saturday and I'll see you next week. Wake Up With Marcy is sponsored by True Serenity Tea, which is a monthly subscription box that delivers award-winning loose leaf teas from around the globe to your doorsteps. Check out trueserenitytea.com to order your subscription box.